Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we can finally lift the lid to a certain degree on the 6800 XT. Let's do this. <sighs> I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read? 3200 megabytes a second write and capacities of up to two terabyte i can have these files transferred in no time and if i'm looking for the ultimate performance i could even get the fourth generation fire cuda 520. i better check the link in the description to find out more details so today is kind of a bit of a weird day because we can do a preview on the 6800 xt the problem is you guys have kind of seen a lot of information already released to the public by AMD, including pictures of it. Lisa Sue held it up on stage, for crying out loud. But we're hoping that maybe we can show you just a little bit of a closer look at the card itself. Now, if you don't know anything about the 6800 series or the 6900 series, or anything about this specific graphics card in its specs, let's just run over them, you know, just very, very quickly. So with the 6800 XT from AMD, it comes with 72 compute units. It has a gain frequency, always makes me laugh, of up to 2015 megahertz, with a boost frequency up to 2250 megahertz. Has 72 ray accelerators, teraflops, gigapixels per second, all that stuff that really no one quite understands unless you're really, really nerdy. Sorry. Either way, it has 4,608 stream processors, 288 texture units, and a transistor count of 26.8 billion. Now, when it comes to GPU power, it's actually got, well, better than the competition, 300 watts. And if what AMD are actually claiming that they can be NVIDIA, at a lower performance per watt, that's going to be an amazing thing. And I say this in every single video, and I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me say it, but competition is a very, very good thing because there's only going to be one winner, and it's you guys, the consumer. So what about the other specs? Well, it has 128 megabyte of infinity cache. It has a memory speed of 16 gigabits per second, and total max memory size is 16 gig. They did decide to go with GDDR6 on here, as opposed to GDDR6X, like the competition with the 3080 and 3090 from Nvidia. With the memory interface, we're looking at a 256 bit bus. Memory bandwidth is up to 512 gigabytes a second. It has DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC and HDMI 2.1, not that there's any displays out there that can actually, well, really utilize that yet. Dimensions of the card come in at 267 millimeters and it's gonna take up 2.5 slots inside your case. So that's it for me kind of reading off some specs, but what is it really all about? Obviously we've been testing it in a variety of different games and we will have content for you guys at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. And all, I'm, all I can really say is that the results are very, very interesting. So definitely stay tuned for that. Hopefully I'm not gonna get in trouble for even saying just that one little thing. But let's talk about the design of the card, because I, I kind of feel that that's very important, especially when you look at AMD in years gone by and what they've done with their designs, because frankly, they've not exactly been great when we're talking about blower style fans and how noisy they can be. Just the other day, I was testing or retesting the 5700 XT, and I couldn't get over how noisy it is. So what's going to be the situation with this? Well, to start with, I think we need to look at the design. And it honestly does look a bit like AMD have taken some inspiration from Nvidia. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though, because frankly, the card looks absolutely amazing. There is one thing that I'm not overly keen on, though, and that's the red. I mean, why put red on it? I understand that you're AMD and your color is red, but it kind of, I don't know, it just gives something to the consumer that they didn't want because it's going to dictate the color scheme and the general overall theme of your system. And I'm not really too happy about that. Yes, you could modify it, but who's gonna really wanna do that at least on the consumer level side of things. Now it does have a triple fan design, which is very, very nice to see. It kind of looks something like AMD maybe went to Sapphire and said, do us a favor, look, we've got this graphics card coming out. We can't really tell you too much about it yet, but yes, you're gonna be a part of it. Could you maybe do a little design for us? And then they just went along, sort of grabbed an older design, which isn't a bad thing, and came up with this. Now, I am going to kind of, you know, do something which a lot of people are going to hate me for. But does anyone remember Pokemon back in the day? Team Rocket? Once you see that the R in the middle of them fans is the Team Rocket logo, or very, very similar to, you can't unsee it. Sorry, guys. 
But back to the overall design, it looks really, really nice. It has some nice coloring on there with the kind of black, silver, gray kind of colors. Some of it is shiny, some of it is matte. It just overall looks very, very nice. Switching around to the back of the card again, it looks very nice. It should kind of mold in with any type of system or color scheme that you're going for. And as you can see behind the GPU core, they haven't messed about when it comes to them glorious capacitors, which apparently was an issue with Nvidia. It wasn't, it was software. Power wise, we did mention that it has a TDP or TGP or whatever you want to call it, total power draw of 300 watts. And that is catered for by the two eight pin connectors sitting on top. No proprietary connectors on this one. Take note Nvidia. Other than that, the only kind of real design that you can see is on the top of the card where you look and well, it just has this massive fins array basically going on which should tell us good things about the cooling potential and obviously that is something that we will look at in the fully fledged review as well so that's pretty much it really there's only so much i can really talk about without getting in trouble with amd i mean until this date i couldn't even confirm nor deny it whether i had this card or was getting this card which makes it really difficult when we were looking at doing live streams and things like that so yeah, there's kind of that going on, but I'm sure people could speculate who's got cards, who hasn't got cards and so forth. But for me, it's actually good to see some competition back in the market again from Team Red. And I'm really hopeful that, I don't know, it performs as AMD are exclaiming that it will. And obviously there is that other thing as well, where pairing it up with an AMD 5000 series, not that you can buy one, uh, fourth generation processor, not that they're available in shops, and you will get even better results. So again, that's something we're going to test and maybe we'll do a future video for that as well. So let us know what type of content you would like to see on launch date when this graphics card actually fully fledged kind of launches and we can show you performance results in synthetic as well as gaming benchmarks. Until then though, I'm going to get back to testing. It's been a long, long week. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.